The role that Basque identity has played and continues to play in Mondragon's resistance and culture is apparent everywhere we go. I interviewed Beneficial State Bank co-founder and CEO Kat Taylor about what she's been learning. I came with a set of colleagues to join the Delegation of Democracy Collaborative in visiting the cooperatives of Mondragon because we want to see how you sustain a culture, not just an economy of cooperative endeavors. Um, and they have done that for over 70 years. So my colleagues and I are taking careful notes about how we could institute reforms in the capitalistic system of the United States to be more cooperative before it crashes us into climate disaster and social chaos. I hope in my lifetime I play a part in realigning finance in support of public values and that therefore the economy reflects that. In the Basque country, cooperatively owned businesses and an ethos of solidarity are simply a fact of life. But in comparison to the U.S., the Basque region is a small, tight-knit sort of place. What would it take to build the same ethos in a place as large and diverse as the United States? At the end of our time in Mondragon, I asked Marjorie Kelly and delegation member Lauren Harris of the Kenneth Raynan Foundation. Is it too simple to draw a parallel between some of the politics of the era in which Mondragon was born and the politics of now? How do you see this moment in compared to that one? There's definitely a parallel. I mean, we're in hard times. People are looking for strong men all over the world today, just as, as happened during the during the Civil War and in that, in that era. And in, in that earlier time, what we were seeing was the fall of the monarchy. And we passed through dictatorship and then on to democracy as a virtually universal form of government. I think something similar is happening now in the economy. What's, what's dying is an economy built for the few, and hopefully we're, we're moving to a new economy for the many. You've talked about the, di the, the divine right of capital. Yeah, we, you know, we lived for so long with the divine right of kings as though it was normal that a few people had blue blood. And, and, and ruled over us. Well, today we think it's normal that the 1% holds all the assets. A couple of billionaires own more wealth than half, half of the people in the world. You know, that's absurd. And, and we, need to, we need to recognize there is another way to organize an economy. So how would you say we're doing in putting forward that other vision? Well, I think we have a lot of work to do. And I think Mondragon gives us an example. I think we've heard that there are thousands of visitors here every year. Uh, I think we could do a lot more to help tell the story of why this, this model holds promise, why this example holds promise for the world. And I th also think we have to really create new stories about what's possible in an economy mm -hmm. that is a, f a shift from an old, extractive economy where a few people benefit from the labor of many to one where everyone's labor really matters and makes a contribution to their lifestyle and their life quality being improved. But just to push you a little bit, aren't there some issues, aren't there some concerns about <clears throat> the question of localism, <clears throat> mutual aid, a community that hangs together, that <clears throat> is de deeply networked? What happens to migrants? <clears throat> what happens to people that weren't here 50 years ago? <clears throat> uh, people who look different or talk different or haven't been steeped in this culture? Well, I don't think that... I'm a democratic economy is a place where we all belong. It's, it's not just for people of one race or, or one nation. So it's, I think there are, there are lots of cooperatives that are very deliberately inclusive. So I think that uh, that issue is, is one that needs to be integral to this new kind of economy. A healthy democracy is one where everyone has voice, everyone makes a contribution, everyone's valued, that humanity is seen, we see diversity and we value it. Uh, we see and are intentional about including everyone in that democratic enterprise. And I think what's promising here, even with some limitations, is the possibility of reimagining our democracy through the workplace and that having an effect on how we think about our democracy in the political space in the public square. And I think that'll be the story of Mondragon 50 years from now. From Mondragon, I traveled 300 miles to the east to the city of Barcelona in the Catalonia region, another flashpoint in the Spanish Civil War. Franco banned Catalan culture and language too. And as in the Basque country, local people resisted through alternative modes of economics and hanging together. Ivan Moreau is a historian and an expert on the cooperative movement in Catalonia, past and future. We caught up with him in a building that served as a food co-op in the 1920s and 30s and was a site of resistance when the Civil War broke out. 
Now we are in La Lleialtat Sencenca, is an ancient cooperative uh, of consumption. What would have happened here in history? Many things. Uh, they learned to, to organize uh, in a collective form. We learn very much from our grandfathers and grandmother about how without the state and without capitalism people can live very well. The anarchist tradition. One of them, the Republican tradition, the anarchist tradition, and the social, uh, socialism tradition in, in Catalonia is so important, of course. What is happening here now? And now we are trying to rebuild this kind of spa spatial organization, and we, we want to build a, a cooperative city. We talk about uh, municipalism. Mm -hmm. no? uh, for us, municipalism is not just the a local political action made by the local governments, we understand municipalism is the collective action from the neighborhood. For, for us, it, this is a, an important idea uh, because it's, a, it's not a, another kind of politics uh, top down, it's, it's bottom up. So uh, I think it's an, a different way to, to understand the city and to reappropriate all the city in a political, cultural, and economic uh, way. From the historic Lealtat Santan Sanka, I headed to the ECOS Cooperative, a very 21st century group of social enterprises with its own co-working space. Gernika Facundo Varicat is co-founder and coordinator of Lab Coop, a co-op incubator housed at ECOS. It started in 2011, after two years uh, talking to each other, uh, searching the, um, the way to put in common needs and interests and having a new way to intercooperate between us. The social economy that you're talking about, the cooperative economy that you're yeah. talking about, is very different from what some people hear a lot about, which is the sharing economy or co-working like we work. How is a place like this different from we work. It's nothing. It's nothing related. On it's a very mm, different focus on what economy should be. The relations should be equality, equity, equality, uh, demo democratic, uh, participative, etc. For sharing economy is okay. You have uh, some resources as person or enterprise. Okay, put in common to others, and I will take uh, benefits mm. for it. But no equity. No as equity. With respect no. to power or ownership or control. Does gender make a difference? Social and solidarity economy and cooperatives are um, most part participate by women. We we have also a, a long um, a long space to improve. Also, because we we are in a in a patriarchal context. But you're coming a long way. <laughs> yes, we are trying. <laughs>